This tutorial goes along with Excel Project 5. Go ahead and open Excel and then take a look at your instructions. It tells us we're going to use columns A through F and reminds us to format our headings, subheadings, and column headings the way we've been taught. Now it does give us a little note. It says Excel automatically formats numerous types of data to a format that you may not want to assure that the information you enter into a cell will remain the way you keyed it in key an apostrophe before the cell contents. For example, the days in the column headings will reformat to 3 hyphen May unless you key an apostrophe before the date. So we're going to make that um, note in our minds and be sure we make that change when we're keying in those column headings. Uh, then we're going to format stuff uh, according to the instructions. Let's go ahead and begin by getting everything keyed in. So in A1, turn your cap lock on and key in Quick Print Publishing Company. Then we have two subheadings on this one. Our first subheading will go in cell A2. We have Travel Expense Report. And then in cell A3, we'll put in the second subheading, which is Name, colon, space, John McCarthy. We want to make sure we have a blank row above our column heading, so we're going to skip row four. That puts us in cell A5 to key our first uh, column heading. Let me adjust my column width so I can see column B carefully there. Now here's what the instructions were telling us. When I type May 3 and press tab, it changes it to 3 hyphen May. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to come back to it and I'm going to type an apostrophe that's right next to your enter key on your keyboard. Then I'm going to type May 3 and press tab and it stays exactly the way I type it. Now here's another trick I'd like to teach you. We have a feature that allows us to copy or to continue on a series. So I want May 3, May 4, May 5, May 6. Those are considered a series. They go run one right after another. So we can do something called a fill. Notice we have this black box around our cell and in the bottom right hand corner of that black box you'll see a little black dot. When I move my mouse on top of that black dot it turns into a solid black plus symbol. If I click and hold that black plus symbol and drag to the right, notice it's displaying a quick tip of May 4 then it displays May 5, then May 6, and I can release and it keys those in for me. And then in F5, uh, we want the word totals. Okay, those are our column headings. Now you're ready to key the information that goes under each of your column headings. Pause the video, key in your data, then restart the video when you're ready to begin again. After you get those all keyed in, be sure you go back and proofread all of your numbers very carefully. Uh, if you have a number keyed in wrong, it will make your totals at the bottom and over in column F wrong as well. So read through those all again very carefully before you continue on. For our formatting, we'll go ahead and start in uh, cell A1. You'll turn on your bold and make that 15 point. Then we want to merge and center, so we're going to highlight A1 through F1 and then go up and click on your merge and center button. For our subheadings, we have two of those to format. Click in cell A2, see we're going to highlight A2 through F2, do a merge and center, and then for our second subheading, highlight A3 through F3 and do a merge and center. For your column headings on row 5, go ahead and make those centered and underlined. And then we'll format our numbers and get our totals in before we adjust our column widths. Our numbers are in cell B6 through E15. Go ahead and highlight those and format those to currency. And you do want two decimals showing. Now we're ready to do our totals in column F. Uh, to do your totals, you're going to learn a function called the sum function. To do that, there are two ways. The first way is to type in equals, and then we can type in the word sum, and you'll see that function pop up in your drop down. Go ahead and double click on it. It gives us an opening parenthesis, and then it's telling us that we need to highlight a range of cells. So we're going to highlight from B6 to E6. 
and that fills in the cell reference for us and then you can add your closing parenthesis and press enter and that gives us our total. Once we get that first number in we can actually use that fill handle to copy our formula down. So I'm going to click back on my answer, go to my bottom right hand corner, grab that little fill handle, click and hold, and drag down and I get my totals for each row. Now I'm going to click underneath column A, so I'm in cell A16. I'm going to turn my bold on, turn on my cap lock, and we're going to create a totals row. So we're going to type the word totals in bold and all caps. Then underneath column B, I'm going to do an auto sum again. Now we did the equals and then type the word sum in. Up in our editing group there is actually an auto sum button and if we click on that it will make a guess as to what area we want to uh, total or to sum. And as long as the area is correct we can move on. If the area were wrong and we wanted just this area we can re-highlight by just clicking and dragging and it updates our reference at the bottom. Okay, let's go ahead and do control enter to display the answer but stay inside the same cell. Then move on top of your fill handle, click and hold, and then we're going to drag to the right all the way through column F to get our totals for each of our columns. All right, now that we have our numbers in, let's go ahead and adjust our column widths. And we need to add a border to our totals row. We're going to highlight from the word totals over to our last answer. So we're A16 through F16 and we need to apply a single top and double bottom border. Our borders can be found in the font group. We have this border button here and it has a drop down. We'll click on the drop down and we want to come down and choose this one that says top and double bottom border. And it looks backwards while we have it highlighted but if we click off of it, it shows us the correct version. It's not inverted and we have a single top and a double bottom border. Okay, do control home and run your spell check. Fix any errors that you have. Center horizontally and vertically on your page. Add a header. You want your name at the left class period in the middle and at the right we're going to put our file name in. Then I'm going to change my view back to normal. Uh, we're going to save as project 5. Be sure you change to your student drive. Go into your computer tech folder and your Excel folder. Key in project 5. And then let's do a print preview. Make sure that it's definitely in the center the way we want it to be. And if it looks good, go ahead and click on Save and Send, Create PDF, keep the name as Project 5, and you are ready to submit your file to Canvas.